Okay, so hello dear doctors. I hope that all of you are managing well. I hope that you hear me clearly. Okay. Uh, I can't see that. Yeah, I yes, can't. Yeah. Okay, good. So um, I'll mute all of you just for um, you know. Uh, uh, to avoid any interruptions for others okay I can't see anything in the chat box okay because I'm sharing the screen um, after we finish I will answer all of your questions if you have any question okay so um, hello again if you don't know me this is Dr. Sahar Ali the founder of Blab2 Warriors Groups I am one of the NHS doctors in acute medicine I do provide full course with mind maps and simulated scenarios. Uh, I do also provide practical course, simman examination procedure prescription with mind maps and simulations on real simman and mannequins as well. In addition to that, I do provide one-to-one -one mocks with detailed written and verbal feedbacks. So let's talk about our plan for today. Today we are going to take four cases, practical cases, simman, te uh, examination, teaching and prescription. After each simulation, I will give my comment um, to the doctor about his performance or her performance. And after that, we will talk about how to do the station or the case with our mind maps of these cases. At the end, I will give you an advice about confidence, how to be confident if we have time. If we don't have time, we can postpone this to the next uh, free session, inshallah. This is one of the usual practical course mocks, okay? Um, due to the time limitation, my time, my time limitation, um, I decided to include all of the Blab2 candidates, um, um, uh, you know, to... Um, to benefit from um, the mock and also to continue my support to all of you doctors. All right, so uh, as a positive energy, um, this is one uh, of you know uh, some of the um, past messages uh, from the candidates in my course uh, who passed recently. Alhamdulillah. So this is just for positive energy. Uh, I hope all, all of you doctors uh, to pass your exam and uh, to celebrate your success in our group, inshallah. So please do your best and the best is coming, inshallah. So let's start our practice. Uh, we are going to take Simman first. The priority for the core subscribers, okay, because this is one of the um, uh, the, um, the the mocks of the course. Um, after that, um, we can take uh, the doctors from uh, outside the course. So, let's take our first case, uh, Doctor Isaac. Are you ready? Okay. Yeah, Are you I'm ready. ready. That's it. Okay, good, very, very good. So, can you please share your um, camera on the yes, pillow? True. Yeah, on the yes. on the pillow, please. Um, yeah. Okay, good. Pillow or your yeah, <laughs> yeah our <not> lovely <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, our lovely Teddy. So yes, yeah. very, very good. So, read your question. You will have okay. one and a half minutes. 
after okay. that we are going to start okay okay Begin. Start. Okay. Hello, my name is Ishim Kanajjiman. My GMC number is 122456. Uh, I have taken that uh, all precautions. I presume that. Hello. Hi, doctor. Hello, my name is Ishim, one of the junior doctors in this clinic. Hi, doctor. Hi. Uh, what's your name? Uh, yes, doctor. Uh, what's your name? My name is um, Mr. Mark White, doctor. Okay, can I call for you, Mark? Yes, it's fine, doctor. Okay, so Mike, could you please tell me what happened? Doctor, I vomited blood, doctor. Oh, I'm really sorry to hear that. It must be really difficult for you. Yeah. Okay, Mike, so could you please tell me when did this happen to vomited blood? I vomited blood two hours ago, doctor. Okay, and uh, by the way, do you have any medication, any diagnosis? Um, no, doctor. They, um, I don't know why I have vomited, but I have um, peptic ulcer. Oh. I take ranitidine for this. Okay, okay, that must be a reason. I'm not sure what yeah. cause it is, but one of the possibilities is that, Mike. Yeah. So, Mike, if it is okay for you, can I ask questions and uh, just examine you? Is yeah. that right? Yes, doctor, please help me because I'm feeling dizzy a little bit. Okay, okay. So, don't worry. Uh, you're in good hands and we'll take care of you, Mike. Okay. So, Mike, uh, could you please tell me, do you have any allergies to the food medication or something else? No, doctor. Okay, so Mike, if it is okay for you, I will reassess you uh, very quickly, okay? okay. Uh, I have a chaperone with me and she your privacy. Is that alright? Okay, doctor. Okay, and uh, Mike, could you please uh, open your mouth for me? Okay. Okay, I can see any edema, any uh, other things. Okay, no. Okay, and. Yeah, no, nothing, nothing in the mouth. Okay, and my patient is talking with me. The airway is looks like patterns. So uh, I will start the ABC protocol. Now a protocol is uh, true care is uh, I look at the true care and I look at the, any deviation or not. I okay. couldn't see any deviation for the true care. And Mike, if it is okay for you, I will just uh, look at your true care. Okay, I just yeah. felt it with my hands. Okay. Okay. Okay, it looks like normal. So, Mike, if it is okay for you, I will tap your chest, okay? okay. And heal your chest. Okay, okay. the chest is normal, uh, doctor. Okay, uh, Mike, it, if it is okay for you, I will just listen to your chest, okay? Okay, doctor. Okay, uh, I will uncover you a little bit. Yeah. Okay, okay. normal, normal breathing. Okay, Mark, uh, your situation looks like 98 now, okay? Yeah. Uh, but uh, I will put some oxygen for you to relieve you, okay? To make sure that everything is fine. Is that alright? Okay, doctor. Okay, uh, I will start to my patient to the oxygen. I will start oxygen for you. Examine, I will start my patient to the oxygen 15 liters for a minute. Okay. Okay, yep. I will start. <laughs> Okay, uh, Mike, now I'm gonna uh, listen to your mm -hmm. heart, okay? Okay. The okay. Heart's, heart no, uh, sounds are normal? Normal heart sounds? You are muted, doctor. You are muted. Can you unmute yourself quickly, please? Unmute yourself. Hello, doctor. Can you hear me again? Yeah, yeah. Okay, you okay. can proceed. Okay. My patient's heart uh, rate a little bit increase. Uh, looks like a little bit touch card. It's not too much. Okay. So I look at the monitor. The saturation looks normal. And I will look at my patient's uh, tension. 
and it looks like uh, hypotensive. My patient is really hypotensive. Why are you alert now? Doctor, I'm feeling dizzy, doctor. Okay, so Mike, I will start uh, some cannulation for your both of your arms, okay? okay? And put a cannulation to both of your eyes, mm -hmm. and I will start some treatments, okay? Some uh, uh, silent treatment, okay? Fluid okay. treatment for okay. you. Examiner, I will start my patient to do uh, 50, uh, 500 and now silent in 15 minutes from the okay. right left, right arm. Okay. Doctor, I still feel dizzy, doctor. Okay, Mark, don't worry. I will start another uh, saline, another fluid for you, uh, for your left arm right now, okay? And uh, 500 and now uh, fluid saline in 15 minutes again. <sighs> doctor, I don't feel better, doctor. Okay, Mike, I think that you have some condition called hypertensive, okay? Uh, your blood pressure is not increasing. Because of that, I will uh, check uh, some blood uh, type for you, okay? And with, uh, after that, I will start some uh, ORH negative blood for you uh, in uh, right away. Okay. Okay, I will start some blood transfusion for you. How, yeah. how are you feeling right now, Mike? Two minutes remaining. Okay, that's, that's really doctor. good. Your blood pressure increasing. I wonder my blood, uh, my patient's blood pressure increasing, and that's really good. Mm -hmm. And my patient's saturation is looks like normal, and uh, my patient is like a little bit touch COVID, but it looks like normal. So, Mike, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling fine, doctor. Okay, so Mike, uh, let me examine you again, okay? Uh, I did the circulation part. Uh, just look at my uh, finger, okay, to check your eye pupil reaction. Okay, normal doctor, normal reaction. Oh. Okay, and I will check your uh, abdomen, okay? Looking uh, for what? Uh, looking for any, uh, any swelling, any bleeding, or uh, looking for any... Uh, uh, melana for uh, outside of the body, okay. especially in the tube. Normal, normal abdominal okay. examination, just tenderness okay. in the epigastric. Okay. And I look look at my patient's legs for checking the pulse, if pulse is normal or not. Normal. And papillary field side. Okay. Uh, okay, Mark. Do you have any idea what's going on? I don't know, doctor. What's going on? Okay, you can uncover yourself. I uh, finished my uh, examination right now. Uh, you mentioned that you have a peptic ulcer, okay, and you vomited blood. I think that you have a condition called gastrointestinal bleeding. Have you heard it before? Yes, doctor. Uh, I know they, uh, you know, I had this before and uh, I did hmm. endoscopy before, yeah, one hmm. week before this, yeah. Okay, Mark, I'm really sorry to hear that this is the second time for you. I'm not sure, but I will inform the senior and we will start some treatment for you, okay? Maybe we will do endoscopy again for you and we will uh, give some fluids Move as well. Move on to the next station. Okay, time is done. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Uh, Isaac. <laughs> uh, just, I need to stop this because it's irritating a little bit. Yeah. So, <laughs> okay. So how do you feel? Actually, doctor, you know that <laughs> you know me, <laughs> and uh, I just really generally that at the cinema. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Okay, so um, let me quickly give you um, a, a quick comment on your performance, and after that, okay. we are going to talk about the station and how to um, do it. Um, with the mind map. Okay, so okay. first of all, um, the oxygen saturation is normal, all right? Yeah. So you don't need to give oxygen. Oh, okay. Okay, as long as the oxygen saturation not less than uh, 40. Um, um, uh, Ninety-four percent. Okay. So you don't need to give any oxygen. All right. This is mm -hmm. the oh. first thing. The second thing, the patient is talking, 
he is breathing properly so um, we can take history what is mm -hmm. our history our Begin. history is just a second uh, our history will be um, asking about what happened mm -hmm. and the check for the causes um, try to find out what is the cause of this bleeding to address that in your management okay mm -hmm. And then ask about the allergies and medical condition. I'm pleased that you asked about allergies before you give uh, anything to the patient. Good? Yeah. Okay. This is the second thing. Um, the third thing is that you are trying to talk to the examiner and tell him that my patient is fine, my patient is blah, blah, blah. No, don't do this. Okay. Yeah. Talk to the talk only to the patient the only thing that you can um, um, mention to the examiner if you are going to order anything or if you are going to give any medication like um, the dose of the medication this is the only thing that you can mention to the examiner um, in my videos I try to give also the doses while I'm talking to the patient okay so try to talk to the patient as much as you can avoid talking to the examiner unless it is important all right okay. Okay. Uh, this is the third thing um, the last thing is uh, the time management because of you know um, um, you just need to be uh, quicker you can skip airway you can skip breathing this took mm -hmm. time from you um, so by doing this you will um, manage your time smartly all right if we can mm -hmm. give a quantitative uh, marks I would give you in data gathering um, one all right because mm -hmm. you didn't find any you didn't check what are the causes the patient is talking so you can uh, ask him you can take your history quickly the relevant important questions we are going to talk about this don't worry in in the management skills um, you assist me okay but um, you know um, I would give you two why yes you you were uh, doing a b c d e but mm -hmm. uh, you looked like a little bit like n n I don't want to say scripted but um, the patient is having high oxygen saturation his okay. airway is patent so y you don't need to do A and B so think logically mm -hmm. or go logically in the station alright mm -hmm. this is regarding the management skills in terms of interpersonal skills it's it's um, good um, you try to um, calm the patient you try to tell sorry uh, you try to um, tell him do you know what's going on so it's fine the interpersonal skills I would give you um, two or three it's 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 fine okay um, so this is regarding the quantitative regarding the qualitative qualitative um, you will have a tick in the in the time in the management in the uh, consultation right so um, this is regarding um, the marks so um, it's okay to watch the videos it's okay to um, uh, to 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 listen to it but when you do it you will try uh, you will find yourself like um, you miss few things so mm -hmm. we need to practice on um, each station in the right way okay um, so let's talk about um, the, the station itself, how can we do it and also before we move, do you have any question about your performance, about the station itself?
No, but they're actually, you know, that I didn't do for the last month. Yeah. <laughs> the first time after the one okay. month. <laughs> okay, no worries. So, yeah. yeah okay. Because of that, a little bit. Confused. Yeah, yeah, no worries. No worries, Dr. Isaac. You, 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 you did exactly. it, yeah, by doing the station in front of 70 people. So, you are <laughs> brave. <laughs> Okay, so yeah, um, so let's talk about the station itself. Thank you. You can um, close your camera. You it's, it's fine. Thank you so, Thank so you. much. Okay, um, so let's talk about our uh, mind map. So this is our mind map uh, in upper GIT bleeding. We have taken in the last uh, sessions, we have taken an uh, anaphylaxis, we have taken uh, as asthma, sepsis as well. Today we are going to take uh, upper GI bleeding. Uh, for all of you doctors, this is um, the mind map of um, my sim man uh, in the course. Um, so, this is the outline. I just need to s uh, mute all of the doctors. Okay. The first thing in our mind map is trying to calm the patient if he's anxious, if he is dizzy, if he's short of breath. Trying to calm the patient. By calming the patient, you also try to calm yourself. <laughs> all right? Then confirm the identity with the patient if he's talking if he's not talking please confirm the identity from the notes or from the wristband in uh, his hand in his wrist okay once you enter the cubicle you will find this kidney tray with blood so please pick up the clue okay um, I didn't want to tell Dr. Isaac that there is a kidney tray. I just wanted to know is she, uh, is she going to pick up this clue or not? But <laughs> unfortunately not. But it's, it's okay. The stress. Uh, this is a normal thing. So ask the patient. I can see that there is blood or a kidney tray full of blood is this from you mr x are you all right are you okay okay then um check the monitor have a look quickly at the monitor to find out what's going on um to have an idea what are you going to deal with all right then you will try to Take your history if the patient is talking. After that, you will examine. You, our examination will be based in all of the sim man on A, B, C, D, E assessment. Then you will give the diagnosis to the patient and you will give the management based on what you have in the station. All right. In upper GIT bleeding, you have two possibilities. The first one is that the patient is presenting with hematemesis, vomiting of blood. The second one is dizziness. The patient is presenting with dizziness. I have done the dizziness one as a simulated scenario and I will show you um, a small like um, a sample. Uh, how are you going to deal with this patient if he is presenting with dizziness after we talk about the mind map all right he is presenting with hematemesis he is talking his oxygen saturation is not 94 so please take your history once you find your patient can talk take your history okay then you can move to your examination what is our history taking uh, is in, in a mnemonic called wabam it's the same as sample, but I found WebAM is uh, easier for me. It's based on your preference. What is WebAM? W is for what happened. B is did that happen before. A is for allergies. M for medications and medical conditions. And that's it. This is your history taking. 
this is your history taking please don't dwell on asking many things many things you are going to do a b c d assessment you are going to give diagnosis and management so use your time properly um, in Wabam you will try to check what happened I can see that you have um, you have vomited blood is this blood from you mr. X yes doctor I'm really sorry for this can you tell me what happened exactly doctor I have uh, I have vomited blood okay so explore what is your exploration as blood is a secretion coming out from our body so it is an mnemonic called the trap T is for timing when did that happen how many times R for relation um, um, ask him is there any specific thing happened before this A for amount how much blood can you tell me uh, uh, roughly how much blood if you can see how much blood in the kidney tray it's okay then B is for blood he is already um, vomiting blood okay after that you will try it out to find out what are the causes the causes of hematemesis is in this lovely picture it gastrointestinal tract the first two questions are logic questions the patient is vomiting blood so you will ask is there any blood dis or bleeding disorder mr. X do you are you taking any blood thinners okay then you will think about this picture we have the esophagus in the esophagus you ask about varices and procedure have you done any kind of procedure uh, on your food pipe recently he will tell you yes doctor I have done um, endoscopy one week ago tell him okay so can you tell me what what is the endoscopy for you need to find out what's what's going on he will tell you doctor I have peptic ulcer and I'm taking granitidine for this and I've vom vomited blood before tell him okay I'm really sorry for what you've been going through so he gave you the clue you don't need to ask about the varices move on okay if he didn't tell you any clue so ask about the other causes varices what are the uh, how can you ask varices ask do you have any medic chronic medical condition in your liver uh, do you have any medical condition in your stomach like ulcer like reflux do you take any painkillers uh, on a regular basis okay so try to find out the causes once you have the cause take the cause and move on okay if he is presenting with dizziness explore the dizziness since when is it continuous or comes and goes what do you mean by dizzy exactly is it continuous or comes and goes if it is continuous so no need to explore before the attack during the attack after the attack it is continuous okay so think about this picture um, we have the man with head and chest for head ask about fast uh, which are the symptoms of stroke then the esophagus bleeding do you have any bleeding uh, 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 anywhere in your body then the heart heart racing then move on to did that happen before any allergies any medical conditions any medications that's it after that examine the patient tell him I would like to examine you I will provide the chaperone with me to ensure your privacy would that be all right with you yes doctor then you will move on to your assessment you will assess a b c d e in each step you will assess investigate treat reassess as you go as you go if you have any problem in one of the po uh, uh, of the assessments uh, or in one um, of the steps investigate this step and treat this step after that reassess ask the patient how, how do you feel right now 
is everything all right now and look at the monitor the patient and the monitor all right here the patient is talking his oxygen saturation is um, 94 percent his breathing is very good so you don't need to do airway skip airway do the breathing right away and in the breathing as well you don't know, need to do inspection palpation percussion tell him I will quickly listen to your chest uh, to check your breathing then move on to C the problem is in C um, you will do the C assessment what is your assessment here you will do um, you will move like this from central to peripheral heart sound blood pressure pulse capillar capillary refill and signs of ex external bleeding if the blood pressure is low if the blood pressure is normal you don't need to uh, look uh, into signs of external bleeding all right you will find the blood pressure is low tell the patient i can see that your blood pressure is low um, don't worry i'm here to help i will insert two cannulas or thin tubes uh, one in each arm i will take some sample from you um, i will order full blood count bleeding and clotting profile and cross matching mr x and i will insert um, i will uh, give you one you can give from one to two liter so start by one liter one liter of rewarmed hartman solution and please insert the catheter all right then uh, check how do you feel right now look at the monitor the monitor is still low tell him okay your blood pressure is still low mr x so can you please um uh, tell me do you feel fine no doctor so i'm going to give you another liter of pre-warmed hartman solution then let's check how do you feel no doctor okay so i'm going to prepare or give you um you can start from one to four units O negative blood please take a consent from the patient maybe he is Jehovah Jehovah's Witness and check the expiry date of the blood all right how do you feel right now mr. X I'm feeling good doctor okay thank 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 um, thank you mr. X this is a very good very good so um, um, let me continue on your assessment and I will tell you what's going on after that Mr. X would that be alright? yes doctor or you can postpone these and give him the diagnosis and the management then you can continue your assessment it's based on what you see in your um, station maybe you are running out of time um, so the D and the E will be fine um, um, maybe you have you still have time so you can continue on D and E and then you can give the diagnosis and management so please use your time smartly all right as long as you saved the sim man and this is um, your aim don't fail to save your sim man please okay do all your best to save your sim man okay then you can move on to D and E in D you will check the alertness of the patient he is alert check the blood glucose do the pupil um, uh, you know the pupil reaction ask him I will shine some light um, to your eyes then check the drug chart all right you will see a, a, a video don't worry I just wanted to give you a quick hint about the, the main points in uh, the sim man and you will see how are you going to deal with the sim man um, how to conduct these 
to your sim man in a proper way shortly all right okay then in e check the temperature and then do like this check the abdomen check the catheter if there is any catheter and examine the leg abdomen catheter leg temperature the temperature will be um, on the monitor in some uh, monitors or you can verbalize that I um, will check your temperature okay then you will give the diagnosis to the patient tell him do you have any idea what's going on mr. X no doctor what's going on tell him okay um, so your blood pressure is ve it was very low mr. X um, and this is called hypovolemic shock um, you might have another bleeding in your abdomen or in your stomach I'm really sorry to say that um, you might have this problem due to a complication of the procedure that you have done in um, um, the endoscopy that you have done uh, in the last week it might be a complication maybe there is another problem we need to look, look into that what's going on do you know uh, do you want to know what is the next step mr. X yes doctor then you will give him the management so before we proceed do you have any concerns no doctor if he has any concern please address the concern okay um, maybe he will tell you doctor um, I'm concerned about this bleeding doctor so what are you going to do for me tell him okay don't worry um, so we are going to admit you do you have any problem in admission mr. X so back and forth bing bong between you and the patient give him the step what are you going to do and check with him maybe he has a problem uh, have a problem in, in this okay then we are going um, to monitor you as well and we will involve the GIT specialist he will come and assist you again to check what's going on and also they might need to do another endoscopy they are they will be in a better position to tell you um, what's going on and what is the next step do you have any other concerns no doctor thank you and thank you do, would, would you like me to call your family and that's it let me show you um, um, just a second doctors Uh, I will show you a small sample uh, um, um, uh, for this station um, I have done this uh, simulation as dizziness okay so let me show it to you quickly can you see see uh, say yes or no because I can't see the chat box yes okay good GMC number one, two, three, four, five, six. I'm assuming that I'm taking my precautions. Hi, I'm Sahar Ali, one of the junior doctors here in the hospital. Hello, doctor. Hi, are you Mr. Michael Lowe? That's me. Okay, are you 50 years old? Yes, that's right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, how can I help? Uh, the doctor, I've been having dizziness for the last week or so. Yeah. It's just getting worse. Okay, and... Um, what do you mean by dizzy? Is it everything is spinning around you or? No, no, I just feel that I'm about to faint. Oh yeah, okay. Is it continuous all of the time? Yes, that's continuous, continuous. Anything makes it worse? Anything makes it better? I think it gets worse when I walk around. Okay, and is there anything else apart from this? Yeah, I've got some, some heart racing that I felt this morning. This morning, okay. Yeah. Let me have a look at your monitor. Yeah, your heart rate is, is, is a little bit high, but it is regular. Uh, I just need to, uh, to ask for heart racing on your heart, okay? okay. Your vitals are pretty normal, okay? okay. So, um, yeah. And um, do you have any headache? No, doctor. Any facial weakness or arm weakness? No. 
Okay. Have you lost your consciousness? No, no. Okay. And do you have a, have you had this before? I've never had that before, to be honest. Okay. Do you have any allergies? Not that I'm aware of. Any medications or medical conditions? Well, I've got very bad arthritis in my knees, but I've been taking ibuprofen for that for the last four months. Yeah. And do you take any kind of stomach protection tablets? No, doctor, to be honest. Oh, yeah. Do you have any tummy pain? Yes, I've got right. pain in the top of my tummy. Oh, okay. So, uh, can I have a look at your tummy? Yeah. I would I provide a chap room with me to ensure your brightness? Yeah, doctor. Okay. The, the problem is now, I've just, I've just sold myself now. Okay, no worries, no worries. I'm sorry for that. I will ask one of the healthcare assistants to come and deal with that, okay? Okay. okay. Doctor, I just feel a bit, a bit dizzy and short of breath. Okay, don't worry. I'm here to help. Let me have a look at your monitor. Okay, your oxygen saturation is going down. Okay, your blood pressure is fine. Okay, uh, can I have a look at your mouth, please? Open your mouth for me, please. I'm looking for any edema, tongue edema or lip edema. No tongue or lip swelling. Okay, so um, I'm, I'm going to give you oxygen. Do you have any smoker's cough? No. Sorry doctors, I just need to tell you why I have um, uh, looked at his mouth now. His oxygen saturation went down. Okay, so please react based on what you have. React based on what you have. Here, his oxygen saturation went down, so you don't know what's going on. Maybe he has anaphylaxis, his blood pressure is low, uh, he uh, is, uh, will be low. Um, maybe the, there is um, a problem in his airway, so look at the monitor, look at his mouth and give the oxygen. All right, this is why I gave oxygen and looked at his mouth, okay? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to give you oxygen by an underbreather mask, high flow oxygen, 15 liter per minute, and then let's reassess. How do you feel? A bit better, but it's still short. Okay. But it's still very dizzy. Okay, no worries. Your oxygen is going up. Let me uh, quickly assess your um, your breathing. Okay. Um, I'll have a look at your uh, chest and provide a chapter with me, okay? Chest examination is normal, doctor. Okay, your exa chest examination is normal. Uh, so I'll assess your circulation, okay? I'm going to listen to your heart sounds. Okay. Normal heart sounds. Okay, it's normal. Your blood pressure is down. It's concerning me, so I just need to check your pulse quickly. Okay, it is rapid and regular. Okay, can I press at your, to your finger to check the circulation in your extremities? Can refer four seconds. It's delayed, so can I uh, check for any signs of external bleeding? Michael? Dark stained stool. Okay, you have dark stool. Okay, so I'm going to insert two white bore cannulas, one in each arm, okay? I'm going to um, take a blood sample to check the functions of your um, body, in, in addition to that, the bleeding and clotting profile, full blood count, and um, blood group and, and cross-matching. Okay, okay, Michael? Okay. Okay. I'm going now to give you some fluids okay. through this cannula. Okay. okay. Uh, Pre-warmed Hartman solution over 30 minutes. And I'm going to insert this catheter. Do you have any allergy for latex? No, doctor. Okay, good. I'm going to insert this catheter to check the fluid input and output. Okay, let me reassess. How do you feel? Still the same, doctor. Still the same. Okay, I'm going to give you another bolus. One liter of pre warm heart solution. And let's reassess again. I still feel the same, doctor. The same. Okay, the blood pressure is still low. Okay, I'm going now to give you blood O negative. One unit. Blood O negative blood. Till 
the, um, the cross matching uh, reach us, okay? Okay, doctor. Okay. How do you feel? Okay, thank you. I started to feel better. Okay, maybe check your vitals. Your heart rate is going down, good. Oxygen is fine. Let's check your blood pressure. It's fine now. Okay? Okay, doctor. Okay? So this is how you should react in the same man based on what you have. Okay? Talk to your patient. Check with him. Try to save the the sim the, the sim man and give everything to the patient what are you going to do and also based on the monitor you will react okay okay so um, I hope that you have now a big understanding of sim man and how to deal with your sim man um, let's do the next station because we uh, we have um, we still have many stations to do. Um, so, Doctor Ali, can yes, you hear I'm me? Okay. Yes. Okay. Good. So, um, I just need you to open your camera on the pillow, and also please, please uh, close one of or um, mute yes. one of the. <laughs> Um, <laughs> the devices just to avoid the echo. Okay. So prepare yourself and yes, uh, let's like, start. I can't see my camera. Oh, we have the... a dog now. <laughs> okay. <Yes. laughs> okay. Because I'm a dog, I'm not a boss. <laughs> okay. Okay, no worries. So, yeah, uh, let's uh, um, start. Uh, have you, pre you prepared yourself? Inshallah. Okay, so can I just, um, you know, um, uh, the camera is like taking the, the dog um, in the middle. I just need to, uh, yeah, to see yeah. more. This is, yeah, this okay. Is oh, okay. <laughs> it's small, yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, we, uh, we have uh, examination station. So please read your question. Okay. You have one and a half okay. minutes okay. to read your question and then we are going to start. Read, please. Begin. Ali Adi, change the number 7925011. Hello, I'm Dr. Ali, one of the doctor. Uh, here in the department. Can you please confirm your name and age for me, please? Yes, doctor. I am Maria White and I'm 55 years old. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, Ms. Maria. Thank so, you. how can I help you today? Uh, doctor, I have um, um, swelling in my tummy. Mm -hmm. Okay. Can you tell me more about that? Um, what do you want to know, doctor? Uh, well, can you please uh, tell me where exactly is that swelling? It is all, all over uh, of my tummy, doctor. Mm -hmm. So can you tell me when did it start? Um, th uh, three weeks ago, doctor. Mm -hmm. So uh, was it a second onset or a graduate? No, graduate, doctor. Mm -hmm. So is there anything make it worse, anything make it better? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, so is there anything but I am you this uh, apart from this uh, swelling? Um, no, doctor, just the swelling. Mm -hmm. So, is there any other swelling apart from your abdomen and your body? No, doctor. Mm -hmm. That's great. So, do you have any fever or flu like symptoms? No, doctor. Mm -hmm. So, there is no lumps and bumps in your body? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. No, 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 ch no it, uh, change recently? Um. I feel like I lost some weight, doctor, in the last, mm -hmm. um, like, three months. I lost, like, um, two stones or something like this. Mm -hmm. Okay, was it that intentional? No, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, uh, do you have any abdominal pain? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. So, is there any nausea or bullet? No, doctor. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, uh, 
you don't have any fever of relax symptoms as you mentioned to me yeah. uh, so uh, is there anything bothering you no doctor just this is swelling mm -hmm. okay that's great so uh, it, this, this is the first time you have this swelling yes doctor this is the first time for me Mm -hmm. So, have you been diagnosed with any medical condition? Uh, no, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, do you smoke? No, doctor. Okay, do you drink alcohol? Uh, no. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So, uh, have, uh, have you been taking any regular medication or over-the-counter medication or any alcohol medication? No, doctor. Mm -hmm. So, uh, do you have any allergies? No, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, is there any family history of any medical condition? Any? Any family history of any medical condition? Um, like what, doctor? Mm -hmm. uh, like uh, uh, diabetes, cholesterol, uh, heart attack or something like that? Um, no, doctor, not that I'm aware of. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. So... Uh, ideally, I should examine you. Uh, I should check your observation and examine your tummy. Is that okay with you? Uh, yes, <coughs> doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. As I mentioned to you, I should uh, ideally I need to check your observation, including the uh, pulse rate, blood pressure, respiratory rate, and oxygen saturation. And I need to examine your tummy. That would require me uh, to feel your tummy and listen to your bowel sound. Uh, is that clear with you? Yes, doctor. It's okay. Okay. Regarding the examination, I need I need you to lie uh, down comfortably on the couch, and uh, yeah, you need to be undressed from your mid chest to your mid thigh. Okay. Is that okay with you? It's okay, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it's not it would be not painful, but it could be uncomfortable at any point. You feel pain? Just let me know, and I will stop. Okay, doctor. Shall I proceed? Yes. Okay. I will provide the chaperone with me to ensure our privacy. Okay, doctor. Okay, now I, I need to uncover you. Ms. Maria, is that okay with you? Yes, it's okay, doctor. Okay. Uh, first of all, I need to look at your tummy. Mm -hmm. uh, I can see that there is uh, abdominal distension. The umbilical is on the normal side. There is no scar, no stria, and there is no ulcer as well. Mm -hmm. uh, now I need to fill your tummy. Is that okay with you? Yes, it's okay, doctor. Okay. Uh, to check the temperature of the nine quadrants of the abdomen. Okay. Uh, it seems to be normal. Yes. Okay. Uh, I need to do uh, soft, uh, uh, soft uh, touching to your abdomen. Is that okay? Okay, doctor. Okay. Um, looking for what, doctor? Uh, I'm looking for tenderness, gardening, or energy of the abdomen. Okay, normal. No gardening, no energy. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, now I need to do a deep palpation just to check your liver and spleen and kidneys. Is that okay with you? Okay, doctor. Okay, can you please take a deep breath for me? Okay, the, um, you can't feel the liver. There is abdomen, mm -hmm. there is fluid inside the abdomen, doctor. Okay, now I need to check the spleen. Okay, also the spleen. Kidneys. Normal. Okay. Uh, after that, I need to just uh, hear uh, your uh, bowel sound and need to check the uh, aortic and renal group. Is that okay with you? Okay, doctor. Um, normal, okay. normal intestinal sound. Okay, just I forget to do shifting dullness. Two minutes remaining. Okay, uh, shifting dullness is present, positive. Uh, okay. Uh, I need to complete my examination by examining your uh, lungs in your body and do general physical examination. Is that okay? Okay, doctor. Okay, now I finish my examination. I, you can cover up. Thank you, Samaria. Thank you. Okay, uh, from what you have told me, that you have a swelling in your abdomen uh, that started three, years, uh, three weeks ago. It was this gradual. Uh, and from my assessment, uh, I can see that there is a fluid in your abdomen. Okay. Am I clear to you? Yes, doctor. So why do I have this fluid? Uh, well, there's many causes behind that. Uh, we will run some investigation to make sure what the cause behind that. Okay. I will inform my senior to do uh, full of blood, full of blood, uh, uh, protein blood investigation, like full of blood count, 
uh, and the uh, ABG and the uh, leading up and the clothing profile uh, and we may do a gelus scan for our abdomen. So am I clear to you? Yes, you are clear, doctor. Mm -hmm. uh, um, I will also consider to refer you to a specialist. Uh, they will be in a better position to explain to you everything. They may need to withdraw some of the fluid from your abdomen. Uh, that will be very helpful for you. Is okay. that okay? Yes, doctor. But why I do have this fluid? Do, do you have any idea why do I have this? Uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, according to what, uh, to what you tell me, uh, until now I don't have really a clear idea about what, be, uh, what could be the cause behind that. But as I mentioned to you, uh, we will try to find out the cause by doing uh, the investigation uh, to make sure everything is fine. Okay, okay, doctor. Mm -hmm. Thank Move you. on to the next station. Time is done. Okay. Thank you so much, Dr. Ali. Thank you so much. Um, so, um, how do you feel? Uh, I feel better than the twice uh, before that. Okay, so uh, regarding the um, history taking in the examination, you did it well. You you, you did you did some mistakes. We w we will talk about them. Okay, mm -hmm. but what is concerning me is your um, management part. Um, she the patient is fifty five. She's over fifty. She is presenting with ascites and she has lost weight. Two stones. It could be ovarian cancer. It could be something related to cancer. If you, if you don't want to say yes. ovarian cancer, so be alarmed. This is the point, mm -hmm. Doctor Ali. So it is very important to pick up the verbal and non-verbal clues. You should be a safe doctor. So this patient is over 50, she is having um, this loss of weight, so you need to urgently refer her to the gyna specialist. Okay, so um, I just need to give you some information about ovarian cancer quickly, quickly. If uh, any woman who is more than 50 presenting Speaking. with... Just a second presenting with uh, abdominal uh, distension, ascites or fluid buildup, um, bloating for more for for uh, one month okay um, so you need to be alarmed you need to suspect ovarian cancer and uh, refer her urgently within two weeks okay um, this is regarding um, the uh, ovarian cancer. So, I will give you quickly um, a few hints about your performance and we are going to take the, the mind map. So, um, in history taking, you did it really well, but you did few mistakes. What are they? Please, when the patient tells you something like it's not good, don't tell her great, good, okay tell her um, all right okay so um, avoid telling good and great um, um, if you feel that um, it is you know uh, the patient maybe tells you doctor um, uh, I'm I don't smoke I uh, not dr don't don't drink alcohol or I have lost weight I think you told me something like good or great for in 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 the mm -hmm. Uh, wrong place okay so avoid this please or try to be alert or uh, be aware of this okay this is uh, the first thing the second thing is um, the family history when you ask about the family history please specify what are you asking about any family history of abdominal problems or GIT problem cancer maybe okay so specify what are you asking for the patient everyone has a big family and many people so it is um, not an appropriate question to ask is there any family history of any chronic disease 
So what chronic disease are you asking about, doctor? All right? So this is regarding the data gathering. In examination, you did it very, very well. You missed, you missed the percussion. So when you miss something, don't, don't react that you have missed it. Okay? Move on. Tell him, okay. So I just need to tap on your tummy. Um, move on. Don't show the examiner that I missed it. Okay? Be confident. Be confident. Even if you missed something, um, um, return to it in a smart way. All right? Um, when you tell the patient, I will touch or um, ha I will have a feel to, um, or I will have a soft feel um, to your tummy, okay? I will press deeply to... Uh, examine the liver and the spleen okay this is how to tell the palpation um, percussion is tapping okay in auscultation I will have a listen to your intestinal sounds you don't need to tell the patient renal and aortic brui he doesn't know what is that okay mm -hmm. um, in your management you will tell uh, I will tell you how to, 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 to give the management. I just wa um, want to move on, um, just not to waste the time. But please, don't tell the patient that you are going to ask your senior to do basic bloods. It's not a oh, good okay. thing. Yeah, okay? It's not a good thing. Do your job. Do your job first. And if you got stuck in some point, you can involve your, se your senior. Okay, don't ask your senior for every step. You are a doctor, even if you are a FY2 doctor, but you have duties to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, um, and the urgent referral, please. Be alert. Okay? So, mm -hmm. I would give you in data gathering, um, data gathering, I will give you three. Good, very good. Management skills, I'm really sorry. One. <laughs> One. Uh, interpersonal skills are two to three, but please avoid avoid the um, um, saying great or good for um, in the um, wrong position. Okay. Inshallah. Mm -hmm. Inshallah. Okay. So um, the tick is in the management. Okay. Just just a question about the management. If yeah. I start in the exam and I didn't know, I don't, I did, I will, I don't know the management, or I don't know the exactly what the patient have. It's uh, okay. How to deal with that? Okay. If you don't know, it's okay. But you have an alarming symptom, so you need to be alert. Mm -hmm. This is the point. You can tell him. Yes. You can tell her. Okay. Um, um, until this point, uh, uh, I, uh, I can't put your symptoms in one image, but as you are losing weight um, um, for three months. This is concerning me, quietly concerning me. So uh, we might need to refer you urgently within two weeks to the um, uh, to the specialist, um, just not to miss anything, any serious causes. Okay, uh, got it. Okay, so thank you. thank you, Dr. Ali. Thank you so much. So abdominal examination. This is the mind map of abdominal examination, abdominal distension. In uh, each examination, please take your history, examine the patient, manage the patient. We can, you can do it like two minutes history, four minutes examination, two minutes management, roughly doctors, okay? Um, um, so in history taking, Please don't dwell on asking every and anything. All right. The patient is presenting with a swelling or abdominal distension. So explore quickly what's going on. Since when is it getting worse? Um, any specific thing happened then? Because it's a GIT symptom, ask about the other GIT symptoms like diarrhea, vomiting, constipation, bloating, okay? Then exclude your red flags. What are your red flags in abdominal distension? Flows, cancer symptoms, and shortness of breath because sometimes this um, um, abdominal fluid or the fluid built up may uh, increase and cause shortness of breath. All right, then your past history, did that happen before? Any medical conditions, any medications, 
any family history of chronic abdominal or chronic GIT problems gastrointestinal problems um, or cancer maybe you are not going to give any medications you are not going to um, you know give anything so you can skip allergy all right save your time please doctors in the personal history you can ask only alcohol you don't need about uh, to ask about smoking um, uh, the patient is 55 so you can skip four peas so think logically um, you can ask about psychosocial uh, or you can skip it it's fine if this is based on your time management but please ask about concerns okay concerns in examination you will check the observations please don't forget observations in any examination station because they will give you findings in some cases and don't say to yourself observations are not um, um, you know important no it is very important what if they give you that this patient is having high temperature so most probably this abdo this fluid there is an infection in this fluid or maybe the patient is in sepsis all right so please don't forget observation uh, then uh, a mnemonic called EECC wash and gloves E is for explaining the procedure E for exposure what are you going to expose and what is the position Dr. Ali did it very very well provide a chaperon and take a consent shall I proceed then please Dr. Ali wash your hands and put your gloves on as a safe doctor then your examination inspection palpation percussion auscultation you did it very well Dr. Ali um, when you do anything please um, tell it in uh, a proper way to the, the patient what are you going to do don't touch your patient without taking take permission without telling him what are you going to do and please verbalize what are you looking for uh, in, um, in superficial palpation you are looking for guarding and rigidity in deep palpation you are looking for or you examine if there is any mass the liver border or surface the spleen kidneys and aorta all right so our examination or our steps in abdominal examination inspection palpation percussion auscultation in inspection you look for distension um, umbilicus if there is any stria or uh, scars hernial orifices okay um, verbalize this when you see when you when you um, see the patient or when you inspect the abdomen till I can't see um, I can see the abdomen is distended the umbilicus in its position I can't see any stria or any scars any hernial orifices can you please cough for me you can do this okay then uh, in palpation I'm going to check your temperature check the temperature in the four in the nine quadrants please then tell him I can't see any discrepancy in the temperature in your tummy I'm going to um, have a light feel to your tummy uh, please if you feel any pain or tenderness let me know I'm looking for any rigidity or guarding so the palpation is TTD temperature tenderness deep palpation in deep palpation you look for masses liver spleen kidneys and aorta then the percussion you will percuss uh, you will find out the liver span the spleen span liver uh, bladder size and shifting dullness please this is the most important thing if you don't mention these it's okay but shifting dullness all right um, then auscultate you will have a stethoscope there tell him I will have a listen to your tummy to intestinal sounds the examiner will tell you normal sounds and then you will move on to your management do you have any idea what's going on no doctor um, so um, from your history and from my examination I found that there is a, a fluid built up in your tummy so I'm suspecting that you have something 
called ascites. Ascites, please don't tell the patient you have alcohol damage to your liver, you have ovarian cancer, you have heart failure. No. Okay. Um, um, just for your knowledge, doctors, um, we have three cases in abdominal distension, uh, either alcohol or heart failure. Um, the patient is having um, heart failure and he is not taking his medication, so there is uh, this is a complication. Um, then ovarian cancer. All right. In this case, we have done the ovarian cancer. So tell the patient, um, I'm suspecting ascites. There are many reasons of uh, buildup of fluid in the abdomen. Um, as you have told me that you have this ten this tension for three weeks and also you have lost some weight I'm a little bit concerned um, or I'm quite I'm quite concerned because uh, you you might have um, like um, serious problem and we I don't want to um, uh, you to be alarmed we just need to be in the safe side so um, I'm suspecting something um, or serious in your ovaries. What serious, doctor? Um, I'm really sorry, but it, it could be some sort of ovarian cancer. Give a pause. Your interpersonal skills, please. Then tell her, I'm, I'm not telling you that you have this, but we just need to be in the safe side. Uh, you have lost weight without any intention um, also if she tells you um, I have bloating for a long time so use this this is a credible this is how to give the diagnosis or a credible diagnosis all right then tell her so uh, would you like to know what will happen now yes doctor okay so do you have any concerns before we go no doctor so um, um, I would like to talk with you about what we can do for you, what you can do for yourself, and also we will arrange a follow-up for you uh, to check what's going on or if everything is going in the right direction. So which one would you like to discuss first, Mrs. X? Whatever you want, doctor. Okay. So in terms of what we can do, we will arrange some basic blood, um, the markers for ovarian cancer, uh, for ovarian cancer. Um, for this buildup of fluid, we will refer you to the specialist, GIT specialist. They will uh, assess you. Uh, also, they will do ultrasound. They might need to take um, uh, to uh, you know aspirate this fluid. All right. Regarding um, the um, the other concern, which is cancer, we will urgently refer you to the gyne specialist. To find out, they also will do ultrasound to find out what's going on. So, uh, what do you think about this? Um, okay, doctor. Do you have any concerns? No, doctor. Okay. Don't worry. Um, uh, let's hope for the best. And um, do you have any other concerns? No, doctor. Do you agree on this? Yes, doctor. Thank you and thank you. All right. So this is regarding abdominal examination. So we can have uh, like a small break for two minutes. Two minutes, you can take some sips of water. I just want to take some sips of water, okay? Um, I will share my links, okay? Um, for the doctors who didn't join us yet, um, you are more than welcome doctors. Just a second, let me share it. Okay, doctors, we are back. So, let me share the screen again. Uh, yeah, okay, so we have the next station. Okay, so no worries. Let's do Dr. Iman. Okay, thank you for that. Okay, thank you so <laughs> no worries. So, 
uh, I just need you to uh, raise your voice a little bit. This is the only thing okay. that I want. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. So let me. Uh, sh uh, so you can see the screen. You have one and a half minute. We have. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Let's let let it be like surprise. So uh, yeah, read the question. You have uh, okay. one and a half minute. Then we can. Um, Start. Okay. Okay. I can see the screen. Okay. Start. Begin. Okay. Good morning, Alexandre. Hello. Hello, doctor. Hello. I'm Iman. I'm one of uh, FY2 in the emergency department. Nice to meet you, Alexandre. Thank you, doctor. Thank you. So, uh, Alexa, you're, uh, I understand you're here to learn about urine dipstick. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So, uh, you're a nurse. Uh, yes, uh, doctor. Yeah. And uh, which year are you now? I am in the first year, doctor. No, oh, yeah. So, you're still like uh, fresh. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, do you tell me why you want, what exactly you want to know about uh, urine dipstick? Um, actually, doctor, I don't know much about your urine dipstick, so if you can mm -hmm. tell me from the scratch, I would be grateful. Okay, have you ever seen before a urine dipstick? No, I didn't. Okay, okay, so uh, do you know uh, what, uh, what we, why do we do a urine dipstick in the start? Um, not sure, doctor, to be honest. No. Okay, so, uh, first of all, uh, so I'd like to explain to you what a urine dipstick is. Okay. Uh, please, if you if I speak fast or just stop me at any time, I really want to be understandable. Yeah. So, uh, okay. So a urine dipstick, um, as its name, it's a it's a, a test of urine. Okay. Mm -hmm. And uh, a dip yeah. So this dipstick is like a small um, like it's a piece of paper that uh, it's special that we use to have a quick analyze of the urine like it can give us an approximate information that we can um, check uh, later with some specific test are you following me alexa uh, yes doctor Good. so uh, first of all it gives that uh, it, uh, a lot of information uh, because it can confirm a pregnancy, we can see glucose wave, we can we can check for an infection. Are you with me? Uh, yes, yes, doctor. Okay, so as you can see, Alexa, to do a uh, urine analysis, first of all, we have to have a cup of urine. Okay. And these these uh, bundlets that you can see, mm -hmm. uh, they have they have like many colors. Can you see with me? Yes, doctor. So. Okay, so there are many colors, and uh, you, we are going to put them on the urine, and according to the coloration, mm -hmm. we can interpret the, the results. So can you see these colors with me? Yes. Okay, so uh, first of all, yeah, it's important to wash our hands mm -hmm. before doing this, yeah. putting the gloves, because you know, some uh, like urine can uh, can sort us and yeah. so we have to, be, to it's important really to be careful yeah uh, and we have this uh, paper towel that we are gonna need okay uh -huh. so uh, how we can do this uh, so first of all I'm gonna wash our hands uh -huh. and we are gonna put the the protective equipment uh -huh. as you can see uh -huh. uh, so, yeah, so as you can see uh, in in the bottle of urine usually we always have this uh, the stick, um, like where is uh, uh, the name and the information of the patient? It's okay. all, always really important to check that. Uh -huh. um, uh, am I clear, uh, Alexa? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. So when you when you take the bottle, you can find the name, the date of birth, and all the um, information. Okay. You are gonna see the color of the urine. So what do you think we we can we can know from the color of the urine? Um, it is like um, clear straw color. Yeah, well, so when it's clear, it's normal. So, uh, what do you think we can find as abnormal coloration? Um, Have you like, ever seen yeah, abnormal red, abnormal? yeah, red coloration yeah. maybe if it's yeah. uh, turned. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So it can be dark. Mm -hmm. uh, it can be pink, it can be brown. Mm -hmm. And uh, this coloration, when we see them, we are oriented 
orientated to some uh, problems and we, are we have to confirm with the dipstick so uh, uh, we can so the urine can have an abnormal uh, coloration and abnormal clarity and uh, it can have an, an abnormal uh, odor when we open the um, the bottle. Okay. So then we are gonna take our dipstick, as you see in the with the colors. Okay. And we are gonna put it on the the bottle of uh, of urine. Okay. Are you are you with me? Are you following me, Alexa? Uh, yes, I am with you, doctor. Okay. So we are gonna keep it there for uh, for for a few seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Like for thirty seconds, something like that. And then we are gonna remove it. Okay. okay, so we are gonna put it on this uh, on this uh, paper towel. So we so we are not gonna be contaminated with anything. Okay. okay, and then we have this. Uh, you see, in the bottle, um, in the um, container of uh, the dipsticks, we have many multiple colors. Can you see with me, Alexa? Yes, doctor. Yeah. So we are gonna put the put it behind our uh, dipstick that mm -hmm. we did, mm -hmm. and then we are gonna compare. Uh, 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 you can see that we have like uh, the the ketone uh, glucose, uh, uh, like we have everything here, and we are gonna compare the colors to know if if there is uh, or there is not this abnormality. Okay. Are you following me, Alexa? Yes. yes, following you, doctor. Okay, so uh, after that, we, we will have an interpretation of this dipstick. So, uh, did you follow me all the steps, Alexa? Yeah, yes, doctor. Yeah, so can you... Can Two you minutes give remaining. Me can you? Can you give me a small recap? Uh, yes, doctor. Um, I will put the dipstick in the urine. Before that, I will mm -hmm. check the color, clarity, and odor as well. So, yeah, right. um, I got you, doctor. Thank you. Yeah. Wonderful, wonderful. You are really a quick learner, um, yeah. Alexa. That's wonderful. So when we are gonna do this lip, the dipstick, uh, as you see now, all what we can find. Wh when do you think we can we can order? It's important to order an, an a urine dipstick. Um, actually, doctor, this is my question. So what mm -hmm. if we um, like see um, glucose in in, in the mm -hmm. urine? So what does that mean? So we, when we find when we find glucose in the urine, it means that the glucose is high in the blood, so it went to the urine. So we are suspecting diabetes mellitus, for example. Okay. If it's associated with ketone, it's like more serious, and it may be uh, a ketoacidosis of uh, diabetic. It's really an emergency, for example. Okay. Um, so when you see, for example, nitrites when they are positive, mm -hmm. uh, it means that maybe there's an infection. Yeah. So what what should yeah. I do if I see glucose doctor in the urine? So so of course you have to tell the the doctor, the consultant, okay. to ask you to to you have to always um, like to you have to document it mm -hmm. in the patient uh, records. Okay. And it's important to uh, explain it first to the patient and to inform the, the doctor about it. Okay. Okay, doctor. Okay. So do you have any other concerns, Alexa? No, thank you, doctor. Okay, thank you. So if you want to learn anything or if you want to do it uh, together, maybe sometime. So if I have a patient, I, maybe I'll call you, Alexa, to do it together. Yes. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. I will, I will definitely do that. Uh, okay, thank you. Move on to the next stage. Thank, thank you, Dr. Emin. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> How thank do you, you feel? Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. I'm, I'm really grateful for that. No, thank you. Thank, thank you, Doctor. You. So, uh, how do you feel? I don't know. I was I was nervous because I was not prepared. So I just tried to. Uh, but to prepare myself. I don't know how. It yeah, was. Uh, but but to be honest, you did it, your interpersonal skills, your interaction with the nurse was very good. So um, thank you. you you did most you. of the the points that you should do so very very good you uh, try to um, show the, the the nurse you try to involve her you try to ask her some questions very very good okay thank you okay thank you. um okay so um yeah let's read the question uh, who are you you are fy2 in the a and e who is the, your student alexa uh, your nurse colleague has come to you to learn urine dipstick additional information she is in her first year why did they give you this T 
to know what are you who is the person that you are going to talk with so you can modify your way in explaining everything so if you are going to talk with a nurse who is first year the way will be different Begin. when you talk to another nurse who is in the maybe fifth year or third year or like um, a head nurse maybe okay so please try to modify your medical jargons your way um, how to deliver the information based on the person that you have all right this is the first thing in the teaching skill you need to know who is your audience what is the base uh, the, the basic knowledge of them and what they want to know exactly all right what is your task talk to her about your lipstick and address her concerns all right when you once you enter the cubicle you will find on the table urine sample with the name and date of birth you will find tissue gloves the urine lipstick with the expiry date please um, um, remember to mention or to look at the expiry date please doctors because it will affect the results okay very very important you will find stopwatch in some cases so um, you will um, if you don't know how to use it so verbalize that you have stopwatch you will um, set the watch um, to to find out the, the time for the reagents okay also you will have um, like a, a roll of apron and um, under the table so pick up one and try to wear it um, maybe the examiner will tell you doctor assume once you enter the cubicle you will find the nurse is preparing herself or himself <coughs> wearing the apron so pick up this clue tell him I can see that you are wearing the apron so you are prepared well prepared from the start very good then move on so they give you verbal and non-verbal clues please pick them up all right um, okay then um, you will start your station I will share with you the the, um, the video um, of uh, the teaching urine lipstick from the course don't worry I just need to tell you dr. Emin what is your performance quickly um, in data gathering you didn't miss um, very big things in the data gathering you just um, nothing important just mention to the student that as you can see we have this sample the name is Adam Smith and his date of birth oh, uh, is this so um, as you can see we have Mr. Adam so document this in Mr. Adam's notes alright uh, when you talk about the dipstick uh, st sticks please tell her the expiry date and advise her to recap the bottle recap the bottle alright and if you have a stopwatch, please at least verbalize that we have a stopwatch to um, uh, adjust the time. All right. This is regarding um, the first thing in management skills. Uh, actually, you did most of the the points um, in in the management. Um, you didn't miss uh, very important. Uh, points in the management interpersonal skills as well um, very good so I would give you three three in data gathering maybe two okay two um, compare uh, you know the, the expiry date and recapping they are important so um, one two three four five six seven eight eight in this station um, you can you um, so uh, without the nervousness you can um, have more so very very good doctor um, uh, Emin keep up the good work okay Thank you. Uh, Thank the, uh, regarding the skills area um, to be honest 
uh, I, I can't give you any, there is no um, obvious weakness, okay? So keep going, you still have time, um, very, very good, okay? Uh, all right, so I will share with you, this is the our mind map for urine dipstick. Let me share with you the video. Talk okay. to her about urine dipstick and address her concerns. In this station, the, the, the nurse will be wearing an apron. Okay, so once you enter the cubicle, you will find her wearing an apron. So tell her, Hi, I'm Dr. Sahar Ali, one of the junior doctors here in the hospital. Are you Alexia? Yes, doctor. How are you doing today? I believe that you are in the first year. Is that right? Yes. So, oh, how how are you getting how how are you getting along with the place? How are you go? Uh, do you enjoy with us? Yes, doctor. Okay, that's good. So, our study. How are your studies so far? Then, tell her. I, I can see that you prepared yourself. You are wearing the apron. I believe that you want to learn about your mm. dipstick. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So. That's good, you are prepared, so let's get started. How much do you know? What do you want to know? Uh, doctors, I, I just need to stop. Um, um, I, I was like uh, talking quickly because this is in the middle of the, uh, the teaching approach in our course. Um, but before you um, gather your data, please, um, the first thing is uh, building a good rapport with your colleague um, then these are the questions that you can ask to your colleague then gather your data how much do you know and what exactly you want to know please very very important then you can move on to ask uh, to do the teaching skills what are the teaching skills by asking brainstorming questions checking understanding let uh, then repeat once maybe give materials please links useful materials for them and praise them uh, if they do something or if they answer your questions um, um, uh, right okay um, I was like uh, um, um, talking quickly in this um, station because it's in the middle I have explained everything from the start okay doctor on uh, about urine dipstick okay tell her it's okay no worries so let's get started try to ask her brainstorming questions do you know what is the urine dipstick it's a quick test to test the urine for some diseases in some diseases you will find some substance in the urine so we search for this substance it involves dipping a specific stick and I'm going to show it to you now into the sample of urine and we will check for the substance. Do you know when we can do urine dipstick? No, doctor. It's okay. We try to take a urine sample from the patients if we suspect that they have diabetes mellitus or um, if the patient has a urinary tract infection, we do also urine dipstick. Okay, so I'm going now to start to show you how to do the urine dipstick. Please if you feel that I'm going so fast, let me know and I will give you some videos about how to do the urine dipstick just to help you more, okay? And then move on, tell her, okay? So before you take the urine dipstick, if you can take some history from your, from your patients just to know what's going on with them. And when you take some history from the patient, try to find if he has any medical conditions and if he is taking any medications because it can affect the results of the urine dipstick. Then tell them that you are going to take a urine sample from them. If it's all right, can you give me a urine sample? What is the best urine sample, Alexia? Do you know what is the best urine sample? No, doctor. Yeah, it's okay, no worries. The best urine sample is the first morning sample, midstream urine. What is midstream, midstream urine? Is the urine in the middle of the flow of urine. Ask the patient to pass the, some urine in the toilet, then try to fill the container in the middle of the flow of the urine. Okay, this is regarding the midstream urine. Then after that, you will wash your hands and put your, glo uh, your gloves on, okay, and wear your apron. In the cubicle, you will find a urine sample, the urine dipstick bottle, 
you will find gloves, roll of apron, tissue, and clock. This is on the table. Again, the urine sample, the dipstick bottle, gloves, apron, tissue, and clock. So the student, you will take the apron. I can see that you are prepared. So I prepare myself. I will put my apron. You will find the roll of a blue plastic apron. Try to take one. I think the examiner will tell you, assume doctor. Then tell her or tell him, wash your hands and put your gloves on. And as you can see, you have here the urine sample. Please, very important, confirm the patient identity on the sample. As you can see, the sample here is named by this patient. So please, it's very important to confirm the identity of the patient to avoid mixing up of the results. Then you will take the sample, check it, check the color of the sample. The normal color of the urine is straw color. If it's red, maybe there is blood. Check the clarity of the urine sample. If it's clear, so it's fine. If it's turbid, you can suspect urinary tract infection. Usually the urine doesn't have any bad odor. If there is a fishy odor, or fleshy odor so this is a urinary tract infection if it's fruity you can suspect diabetic ketoacidosis do you know what is diabetic ketoacidosis no doctor it's the uh, one of the complications of the diabetes mellitus all right all right then you will start your urine dipstick test please check the expiry date before you use the dipstick check it's expired or not as you can see, it is not expired. Pick up one of the sticks and please recap the bottle again. Why? Because if you didn't recap the bottle again, the sticks will react with air and after that it will affect the other results. So make sure please that it is recapped again. Then immerse the strip in the urine as you can see. After that, put the urine tip stick lay it down on the tissue on this tissue as you can see and set the stopwatch set the timer you will find the clock doctors so tell the student why you need to set a timer as you can see here in the bottle these are the reagents with the colors against each reagent you will find how much time you need to wait to check the color of the reagent okay different ones take different times to develop some of them is two seconds and the maximum time you can wait is two minutes so you can wait up till two minutes then you can check all of the strip compare the colors on the strip against the colors on the on the bottle try to match them and then document everything in the patient's notes and after that please throw the strip and the tissue in the waste bin and based on the results you will investigate am i clear so far yes doctor okay so alexia will tell you doctor what if i see ketones or what if i see sugar what if i see protein based on her you, uh, in her, based on her question you will answer so what if there is sugar or glucose in the urine you will tell the student that it means that this patient may have diabetes so we will check the fasting and random blood sugar and if he is diabetic already we can check the hemoglobin a1c to check the control of the blood glucose if he asks you about ketone if you find ketones in your dipstick so this patient may have diabetic ketoacidosis which is a complication of very high blood sugar maybe maybe he was having severe exercise maybe he is in, in a severe stress okay at that time you will order some basic investigations like blood glucose electrolytes and arterial blood gases then you will tell your doctor or tell the doctor that this patient has diabetes uh, has ketones in the urine okay what if she asks you about routine tell her this means that this patient may has uh, may have an affection of his kidney so we will need to order kidney function tests and after that you can ask the doctor they will do some 
scans like ultrasound or CT scan on the kidneys. This is regarding answering her questions. After that, tell her it was my pleasure to teach you. Take care. Bye bye. This is in terms of urine dipstick. Let me show you a, a, a small video. These are your stuff, the bottle, the urine, and the sample. Please confirm the identity, the tissue, the, the gloves. Wash your hands, put your gloves on, and the apron, please. You can find it blue. Then confirm the identity, the date, the birth, the hospital number. Then check the clarity, the color. The clarity and the odor then check the expiry date pick up one of the dipstick put it in the urine remove and Put it on a tissue. And you will have a clock. And you will have a clock to set down the timer. Okay. And then you will compare. Can you see the seconds here? 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 45 seconds to check the agents then you will put everything in the basement then you will wash your hands and document everything document and do further investigations that's it and you will find the stop wood okay so this is regarding urine dipstick um, so let's do the next station doctors we have the last one. Who wants to take the last one? Yeah, I know Dr. Ali. So yeah, you can do the station because no one wants to do. So um, let's do the station, the next one. Okay. Uh, just let me mute all of them. Okay. Uh, so unmute yourself dr ali read the question please and um prepare the prescription the printed prescription please okay okay that's just... okay can you see yes okay read the question please Begin. Ali Ali GMC number 792401. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Ali, one of the general doctors in the department. Can you please confirm your name and age for me, please? Hello, doctor. I am Joan Wilson and I'm 50 years old, doctor. Mm -hmm. Nice to meet you, John. Thank you. Uh, well, John, I can see from my now that you have uh, diagnosed with pneumonia. Is that right? Yes, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. Uh, my consultant uh, has uh, ordered that uh, I need to prescribe you some medication. So, okay. may I ask you a few questions before doing that? Okay, doctor. Mm -hmm. So, do you have any allergy to any medication? Um, yes, doctor. I'm allergic to penicillin. Mm -hmm. So, uh, how do you know about that? Uh, I got a rash one uh, um, in one um, before before that I had penicillin and I had rash. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, have you been diagnosed with any medical condition? Yes, doctor. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I have high blood pressure and high cholesterol, uh, and I'm taking medications for this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, can you please show me your medications? Yeah, they are on the table, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
Uh, I can see from Anna that you have a smoker cup also, is that right? Yes, I have COPD, doctor, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, how do you manage it? I'm taking salbutamol for it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, so, do you have any concern? Do you have any question at all? Uh, no, thank you, doctor. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if you don't mind, can I write your dissertation now? Yes, doctor. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Doctor, do you want me to verbalize or not? No, um, okay, you can verbalize, yes. And the other doctors, please, uh, if you have the printed paper, you can start writing also. Yeah, verbalize, Dr. Ali, yeah. Okay. Uh, first of all, write uh, the name and uh, of the patient, John Wilson, uh, the date of birth of the patient okay. is the uh, 23rd of uh, Okay, the patient's information, you can write it. After that, you yes. can tell me what, what, are, what are you going to do. One of one. Date of return is the date of the exam. Okay. Uh, allergen sensitivity. So, type of reaction is rash. Okay. Or rash. Okay, uh, as the so lab has pencil in it. Okay. okay, to the infection part, looking for pneumonia. Okay. Two minutes remaining. Uh, two minutes remaining. Uh, I just got to I go back to my senior just to check it about the antibiotic to for you. Uh, because as you mentioned to me that you had a 
uh, and now I just uh, uh, will uh, write your regular medication. Is that okay? Okay, doctor. Move on to the next station. Okay, time is done. So what did you manage to write, Dr. Ali, in this time? Uh, I complete. Uh, yes, I complete everything. Just learn to write it. I didn't find it in the Vienna. Struggling with time. You didn't find clarithromycin? Can you hear me? So there is an internet connection problem at your, you, your side, Dr. Ali. Can you hear me, doctors? Hello, Dr. Sahar. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear okay. you. Yes. Uh, as I mentioned to you, uh, I go to the uh, first to the infection part. Mm -hmm. I didn't find pneumonia. So then I go back to the respiratory system looking for pneumonia and also didn't find pneumonia. So, I'm suspecting the problem is what, with my BNF book. Okay, no worries. So, the problem was in yes. the BNF. You have yes. written everything. Uh, I just need to uh, make sure, um, uh, you know, that you have written everything in legible writing. Um, uh, so, if you can share it with me after finishing, it's okay. Okay, okay? No To correct it. Okay, mm -hmm. so um, this is the question, doctors. Who are you, FY2 in the respiratory department? Who is the patient? Mr. John Wilson, 50 years, has pneumonia on top of COPD. Um, the, pa the plan is uh, to admit him. Additional information, the consultant prescribed oral co-amoxiclav 500 milligram three times a day for five days. No additional information, your task. Please undertake his medications and prescribe the antibiotic as well. Note his medications are in the cubicle. Okay, so once you enter the cubicle, you will find the patient is sitting in front of you. So say good morning to the patient, good morning to the examiner, and uh, say your GMC number and your name. Take some history from the patient, tell him I can see from my note that you are uh, here in the hospital because of chest infection. Uh, yes, doctor. Um, and do, um, um, I think also you have COPD. Um, always the patients uh, who um, have COPD, they know what is COPD. Okay? So you can tell them COPD, it's okay. Um, uh, so the plan is to admit uh, you in the hospital. You did it very well. The, the first part uh, in the history taking Dr. Ali, you did it well. You excused yourself from the patient and um, you told him the, um, that you are going to write down the medications and we are going to write down uh, an antibiotic for you. So you can tell him so that the, the plan is to admit you and um, also we will start you on antibiotic um, and I will write down all of the medications for you. Do you have any concerns as you did? No doctor. Then you will start writing. 
um, he will tell you um, that when you ask him about the medications because your task is undertake his medications so ask him what medication do you have any regular medication yes doctor so can you tell me what are they he will tell you they are on the table so are you taking them as prescribed yes doctor my wife is giving me all of the medication so you have a caring wife mr x um so uh, okay so i'm going to write down these medications for you do you have any concern no doctor all right so you will start writing you will start by confirming um, the patient's um, identity with him can you please confirm the name for me can you confirm the date of birth um, if you don't have a patient inside the cubicle you will take the information from the question they will provide you with these sometimes they will give you stick uh, stickers okay so please look at what is on front in front of you on the table if there is any stickers use them to save your time if no so pick up a black pen please and write the inpatient information all right after that write your name your GMC number um, this is uh, a sample uh, or the or the answer from the uh, prescription PDF file in our course okay um, I have answered um, most of the questions uh, the prescription questions by myself um, so uh, then you will write down the resp uh, the word respiratory word the hospital GMC the date of admission is your exam date then chart one of one because he is just will be admitted now so it's the chart one of the charts and uh, of the patient all right uh, then please this is a very important thing if you don't have the allergy status of the patient in the question and you have a patient ask the patient do you have any allergies yes doctor I am allergic to penicillin what do you have when you take penicillin rash write them down and write everything in the capital letter please your name your signature your date of admission the exam date okay then you will move on to the antibiotic uh, part you will tell him so you are allergic to penicillin so um, I will give you another medication just let me check uh, from my uh, from my book what is the suitable antibiotic for you you can write clarithromycin okay you can write doxycycline both of them are right so he is taking atorvastatin if you want to avoid clarithromycin and give doxycycline as a third uh, line of treatment it's totally fine as long as a safe uh, as long as you are a safe doctor it's fine doctors okay i have chosen to give clarithromycin um, um 500 milligram so how to search in the bnf let me show you a small video from our course quickly yeah Venus uh, Okay, so this is the BNF, and um, when you search for the infections, hundred ninety eight. So this the infection, infection is four hundred ninety eight, or you can use this part. Okay, four hundred ninety eight. 98 yeah infection part as you can see this is the content uh, maybe infections uh, bacterial infections and anthic protozoal viral okay it is ordered by the type of the infection um, okay so you are going to search on the as you can see here blood infections cardiovascular system ear eye gastrointestinal genital system 
musculoskeletal, nose infection, oral, respiratory. Respiratory. It shows you epiglottitis, chronic bronchitis, with acute exacerbations, community acquired pneumonia, low severity, moderate severity, high severity, um, hospital acquired pneumonia. What are the choices of medications? So in this case, it is community acquired, it's not hospital. He was not admitted in the hospital, all right? So it's community acquired. You will um, try to find out the first line, the second line, the third line. In the third, in the second line, they will they they, um, they have written clarithromycin. And what is the the page that you can go to? So you will use the page. You will go to the page and find out the dose of clarithromycin in pneumonia, community acquired pneumonia. All right. So this is regarding the BNF. You will find that it is 500 milligram. The root is per oral. Please, the start date and the stop date in any antibiotic. The prescriber signature, please. The indication. Why are you going to give this antibiotic? If you missed one of these points, your management will be the, the management marks will be low all right um, the indication then um, if you have time you can write the GMC number then you will write the dates here it's written in the question five days so 14 15 16 17 18 five days how many times by daily so you will write the time please don't forget to write the time in antibiotics um, so it's two times eight and twenty and please review in any antibiotic you need to review the antibiotic in some antibiotics you will review the antibiotic after two days uh, after three days some antibiotics after seven days so whatever here in the prescription file is written 48 hours review so you can just Put this box here RV review all right you can write by daily it's fine you can skip this because you have written the time okay this is the first thing I just need to mute I don't know what's going on with doctors yeah okay after that the regular anti uh, the regular um, anticoagulants this paper is for anticoagulants not for the regular medications okay you can find daltebarin anti-embolism stalking so this is for regular anticoagulant if you want to write rivaroxepan, apixaban, um, these things okay so then you will move on to the regular medications this paper is for the regular medications you will write down the year the date just write down the first date and let the others for the, the nurses if you are going to stop the medication for a while so just cross off the, the the days that you are going to stop the medication and write down the start date okay of the of this medication so atorvastatin it's 40 milligram per oral the start date no stop date because it's regular signature Additional information withhold till antibiotic finish. The antibiotic will finish after five days. So one, two, three, four, five. Cross off these and start the atorvastatin. All right. It's one daily. So just tick the um, the time frame. Is it in the morning, in the midday, evening, bedtime? Usually we give atorvastatin in the evening just take this one you don't need to write down uh, times don't waste your time all right then aspirin all of them in the capital letter I have written the prescription in black uh, in in in, in uh, blue pen I know that this is wrong you need to write it in the black pen but just to um, to make a contrast for the doctors who are studying this the station 
the dose is 75 milligram per oral. The start date is um, the exam date, signature, and you are going to give them um, in the morning. Okay, so tick this box. Amlodipin, 10 milligram per oral, start date, your signature, and it is bi daily um, from the picture here, as you can see, twice daily. Okay, so you will take two times. Okay, if you missed one of these basics, you will have low marks in your management. If your writing is bad, not legible, not readable, so you will have low marks in the management and in the interpersonal skills. All right. Then uh, the salpetamol is in the as required part. What is the indication? The dose is 100 microgram. Please, microgram is written like this, not in a short form. The root is inhaler. Um, it is uh, the frequency two to six hourly. The maximum is 400 microgram. Prescription signature, prescriber's signature is Sahar Ali. The date is the date of the exam. You can write down one to two puffs in the additional information. This is regarding the prescription. Um, this is the anticoagulant paper for only warfarin. Only warfarin. All right. So uh, we have done the four stations. This is um, the last case for today. Um, uh, please, if you like the session, um, leave your feedback in our group. Please, doctors, it is really, really helpful for me. I always appreciate the feedback from the doctors. It will help me to improve. And also, it will help your colleague to know about the sessions and to attend. It will encourage them to attend okay if you feel like this session is useful for you all right and uh, i always uh, accept all of the feedback so write down your honest feedback please thank you so much for listening and attending um i hope it was useful and helpful as well and um i hope that inshallah i continue supporting uh, all of you doctors so let me stop sharing and check if there is any questions for you.